We had uh, amazing speakers here, each with a very rich and interesting personal history. I'm sure each and every one of the audience in the audience also has an amazing personal history. And I'd like to talk about one aspect of our personal history that is so rich and profound and complex that we barely think about it, and actually science also has to struggle to, to start thinking about it. And that's the history of our body, starting from the original uh, cell uh, from which each and every one of us started, uh, the marriage of our mother's egg and our father's sperm, uh, until what we are today, uh, a huge bunch of cells. Uh, the history uh, involves divisions of cells. Cells divide and then grow and then divide further and further and further and create the, uh, the newborn child, and then they continue to, to divide as we grow up and maintain our body as, as we are grown as adults. And uh, if they divide well, we're healthy. If they divide not so well, we get uh, diseases such as cancer, which is caused by aberrant uh, cell division. Now, what is the story of this? Uh, uh, what is the history of, uh, of, our, uh, of our body from this original cell until, uh, until today? This history can be summarized by an entity, a thing called the cell lineage tree. The root of the cell lineage tree is uh, the fertilized egg. And the cell lineage tree has a branch for every time the cell divides. And the leaves of the tree are the cells which constitute our, our body today, as of this moment. So each and every one of us has, at every moment in our lives, uh, a cell lineage tree that records the entire history from the fertilized egg until that specific moment uh, in time. Science is trying to understand the, this entity, and there is one uh, example uh, of entity which science has uncovered. This is an, a cell lineage tree uh, which con consists of a thousand cells. Uh, the leaves of the tree are drawn at the bottom like uh, descendants uh, in, in, in a tree. The root of the tree uh, is at the top and every branch records a cell division. Now this is the cell lineage tree of uh, a tiny entity, uh, a worm called C. elegans. It's one millimeter long. It has uh, 1,000 cells. And that's the only creature science knows completely uh, the cell lineage tree of. This, uh, this tree is actually not a snapshot, but it records the entire history of the worm from the time it was born until it became an adult. And actually, it should be thought of as a movie because every uh, horizontal line in this uh, figure actually records a moment in time uh, of this worm. And actually, the way science was able to construct uh, this tree is indeed through a movie. This worm takes uh, uh, about a couple of days from the time it, was, it is conceived till it is becomes an adult. And scientists actually took a movie of the, of the worm through this uh, period. And since the worm is transparent, they were able to, uh, to decipher uh, its development and, and produce this, uh, um, uh, this figure. And this movie did not win an Oscar, as, uh, as you can imagine. But it did win a Nobel Prize, and uh, uh, this is a Nobel Prize for understanding the, de the development of the worm and, and uncovering the lineage tree. Now, this is a, a complex problem. It won a Nobel Prize, but it's still tiny and minute compared to the problem of understanding us. Even, uh, even a newborn uh, mouse uh, that uh, we see here has a billion cells. Uh, so it's much more complicated to understand how a newborn mouse uh, becomes what it is from a single cell. Uh, a human being, as an adult, has a hundred trillion cells. So what does it mean? It means that our, the, the cell lineage tree of each and every one of us has hundred trillion leaves and also about a hundred trillion branches. So uh, why bother with such a, uh, a huge, complicated uh, entity such as the human cell lineage tree? Uh, like in mathematics, sometimes you have a complex problem, uh, a theorem that you want to prove, uh, a strategy that people use is to try to prove an even more complex or stronger theorem, and then from it, you use the other, deduce the other theorem as a, as a corollary. So the reason to try uh, to understand the human cell lineage tree, even though it's such a profound, complicated problem, is that uh, if we enumerate, uh, I would say, all the open problems in biology and medicine today, I would say that many of them, maybe most of the fundamental problems uh, in biology and medicine uh, today, open problems, could be answered if we had complete knowledge of the human cell lineage tree. So they could be, uh, questions in biology could be rephrased as questions about the structure 
and evolution of the human cell industry. And I'll give you uh, a few examples. In, uh, in cancer, uh, we all know that uh, cancer is, is, is a very difficult disease to, to cure, and chemotherapy is the standard uh, line, of, uh, line of defense. And in many cancers, uh, we already know that chemotherapy works for a while, and then there is relapse. In some cancers, the, the, the percentage of relapse is more than 50%. Now, what is, what is the reason for relapse? Is it uh, what is shown here, that uh, uh, here we see the, the blue cells uh, are cells uh, before chemotherapy, and the red cells are the cells after chemotherapy, and we see the lineage tree of, of them all together. And what we see is that they're sort of mixed, and the red cells are deeper, they want more divisions. So what this means, if, we, if, if this is indeed the cell, and cell lineage tree of a person who had, who had cancer and then had a relapse, it means that the relapse was caused by cancer cells that escaped the chemotherapy and then uh, re re regenerated the cancer. But what if the picture is different? What if this is the picture? If this is the picture, it means that indeed chemotherapy killed the original cancer, but a new cancer came out of nowhere out of other cells, maybe unhampered by chemotherapy. And specifically, chemotherapy uh, is uh, attacking cells that divide. And if in this picture that you see, the red cells are very high up in the tree, it means that uh, they, they, they are descendants of cells that almost barely di divided. So it means that these cells were sitting there dormant, not, not dividing. Chemotherapy killed the cancer, but then these other cells that we don't know about revived the cancer and started it afresh. So had we had complete knowledge of the human cell lineage tree in health and disease, in this case in cancer, we could know what, what to do, what, what is the source of relapse after chemotherapy. Uh, as another example, uh, in diabetes, uh, uh, one thought of curing diabetes is by uh, causing uh, beta cells which produce in insulin to, re to renew. But can they renew? Uh, if, they had complete no if we had complete knowledge of the human cell lineage tree, we could just look at it and see whether beta cells renew during adulthood or are reborn with a fixed set of beta cells and since birth and, 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 and further down our, our lifetime, no new beta cells were created. So knowing the full human cell lineage tree would give us an answer, should we try to cause beta cells to renew because they renew normally, naturally, uh, and we just have to find the, 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 the pathway to cause them to renew or they never renew after birth and maybe it's hopeless to try to cause them to renew, we should find artificial pancreas or some other, other approach. Another example of a question is, is fertility. Uh, the dogma is that females are born with a fixed set of eggs and they're just depleted through adulthood. That's the dogma, but is it true? Maybe eggs are being created during adulthood as well. Uh, there are indirect evidences and controversies in science about that. There are evidence of females who gave birth after chemotherapy, which supposedly killed all eggs. So where did the eggs that uh, arrived after chemotherapy came from? Um, had we ha had complete knowledge of the human cell in tree, we would answer this and have major implications also in, in, in fertility research. This is just a, a, a few uh, a tiny number of questions that really, uh, that, that, uh, from science, and if we just go central question in, in, in biology after another, one central question of biology after another, we see that it could be rephrased as a question about our cell lineage tree or could, could be answered had we had complete knowledge of the human cell lineage tree. Now, the biggest challenge that humanity has undertaken, the scientific challenge that humanity has undertaken until today was uh, the Human Genome Project. Uh, it cost, costed uh, uh, a few billion dollars, it took almost a decade, uh, and we now have the human, celly, the human genome. Uh, it's uh, three billion letters long, and the ramifications of this knowledge keep coming and, uh, and will be coming in the, uh, more and more in the coming years and decades uh, in terms of implications for, for how we do medicine. Uh, this challenge is 100,000 times bigger because if uh, the human genome is three billion long, the human cell lineage tree has 100 trillion cells and 100 trillion branches, so it's a, it's a bigger challenge. So what shall we do about this challenge? Uh, we can't take a movie. Uh, unlike worms, we're not transparent, and we're uh, developing a co in a dark and secluded place, so uh, it's very difficult uh, to take a movie there. So other methods uh, must be used to try to address this challenge. And uh, really, the, the, the hope for, for addressing this challenge and the reason why I'm 
saying it here today, not as a speculation, but actually almost as a call for action, is that it turns out that our cell lineage tree is actually encoded in our body. And the way it's encoded in our body is uh, uh, in the following way. We all uh, know that we have a genome. The, the genome of each of us is unique. And we're told that the genome in each and every uh, cell of our, of our body is the same, that DNA in, in every cell of our body is the same as every other, uh, other cell. And uh, that's, that's the dogma. But this is actually not quite true. Every time our cell a cell in our body divides, actually mutations occur. A small number of mutations that normally do not affect the, func the function of our body, but they do occur. Uh, as, as many as, as 50 or 100 or a few hundred mutations per cell division. And actually this, this mutation, which uh, occurred during division, is inherited by, other, by the cells, by the descendants of this cell. So actually the cells contain uh, these signatures which record the history of cell division and the signatures of two, cell, two cells in our body are similar if they, are close, if they have close relationship to each other. And if the signatures are very different, it means that they are very distant from each other in the cell lineage tree. So actually, we, we, we showed mathematically that the differences in the DNA among the cells in our body is sufficient to reconstruct the human cell lineage tree with very high precision if we could know it. Now, how could we do this? Uh, um, the price of sequencing the human genome is, is going down all the time. It's a very big industry, and it's, it has crossed or will cross very, very soon uh, the $1,000 per human genome. So, so it means that sequencing the entire human genome costs about $1,000. We have 100 trillion cells, so sequencing all the cell genomes of all the cells uh, quickly is... 100,000 trillion dollars. That's all we need to reconstruct uh, the human cell lineage tree using this technique. But uh, we should not uh, give up. Science started with, uh, sorry, science started with uh, very big challenges uh, um, uh, before that and made, made a, a breakthrough. And um, uh, I believe that uh, progress can be made using much uh, weaker, weaker tools and, uh, uh, and slowly addressing uh, this, uh, this big challenge as, as we go along. <laughs> So in our lab, so that's, that's the big picture and, and the big challenge that I'm talking about. In our lab, we try to nibble at it. It's not more than nibble uh, for the last seven years. And uh, what we did, we developed a method uh, that analyzes mutations in cells. And we did experiments in mice and also uh, are now doing with, uh, with human, uh, with the uh, samples taken from, from, uh, from sick people. And we were able to show that if you don't have to sequence the entire genome of every cell, it's enough to look at, at areas uh, in the cell, in, in the genome that are highly mutable and get the information needed from there and you can still make progress. So we developed a, a system, it's an interdisciplinary you know, computer science, biology, robotics uh, system that takes as input DNA from cells analyzes them, finds the mutations, and uses the mutations uh, extracted from a small number of uh, cells, from a small number of locations in the genome of, of cells, to reconstruct the cell lineage tree. And we were actually able to, uh, to show some, uh, some actual results uh, which are biologically relevant. What we see here is the cell lineage tree of uh, a mouse, part of a cell lineage tree of a mouse, cells sampled from a mouse with a cancer. And here we showed something that does not go against the dogma, it actually corroborates the dogma, but it's perhaps the most direct evidence of the dogma, that cancer starts from a single cell that goes berserk. And what we showed is that all cells taken from the mouse tumor were all under one roof uh, in, of a single cell that uh, was uh, around when the mouse was five uh, months old, and all the other cells of the mouse are not part of this, uh, this tumor. So, this is an example of a result that uh, we were able to show, and um, um, we hope uh, uh, working with, uh, with uh, human patients uh, that have leukemia, we also hope to have an answer to this really pressing question of why chemotherapy doesn't work. Uh, why is there cancer relapse? Is it because scenario A, which means we must have much more potent chemotherapy uh, that does not let cells escape, or maybe scenario B, which means that chemotherapy could be as good as we want, but it actually attacks the wrong cells 
or at least does not attack the cells that cause the relapse and other, uh, other methods must be taken. So we hope uh, uh, to make some progress on, on this question as well. We are a small uh, effort, you know, at the Weizmann Institute uh, with very limited resources and uh, really the goal, starting from the very first paper we published about it uh, about five, five or six years ago, is to entice the scientific uh, world community to recognize first that this really is a worthwhile uh, challenge to, to try to address and second that it is uh, doable, maybe not in, in complete form uh, as I described, but certainly uh, progress can be made in slowly uncovering the human cell energy tree in health and disease using methods that, uh, uh, that uh, described here. And I hope that uh, maybe this will uh, this talk as it goes through the world of uh, internet uh, publications will, uh, uh, will uh, create some momentum uh, behind this project. Maybe just uh, since this is TED at Tel Aviv, uh, I should address the, the Israeli question. Uh, why in Israel? Well, because, you know, <laughs> there, this science theoretically could be done anywhere, but the reality is that it's done here, and maybe it's worth, maybe it's fitting that it's done here. It uh, crosses discipline boundaries, maybe breaks discipline boundaries, it goes against common dogmas, uh, it will create a lot of turmoil if it works. So, Maybe it's fitting that it's done here and not anywhere else. Thank you very much.